Many people think Real Madrid's history started with the dynastic team of Alfredo Di Stefano, Ferenc Puskas, and Paco Gento, which dominated European football. But here's the thing, that's not entirely true. The club has been around since 1902 and has an entire fascinating history that precedes the Di Stefano reign. Enter Manuel Fernandez, aka Pajinho. He arrived at Real Madrid in 1948 and left just before Di Stefano made his debut. Now, we often forget about this period because it was, frankly, a bit of a rough patch for the club. Following Real Madrid's back-to-back -back Copa successes in 1946 and 1947, the club went through a drought until Di Stefano came along. They finished 11th in the 1947-1948 season and never placed above 3rd until 1953. They even finished as low as 9th in 1951. As they say, the night is darkest just before the dawn, and these years of darkness gave way to the Di Stefano era shortly after. But here's the main takeaway from those five underwhelming years. We saw the birth of Real Madrid's first true superstar, Pajinho. This is a man that Maridistas just don't know enough about. When the club signed him and Miguel Munoz in the summer of 1948, little did they know how great Pajinho would become or how influential Munoz, one of the greatest managers in football history, would be long term. Pajinho, in his five years at the club, led the team in scoring each of those seasons, led the league in scoring twice, and scored 108 goals in 124 games. When Di Stefano arrived, Real Madrid sold Pajinho, meaning the two unfortunately never got to play together. Pajinho himself was saddened, as it was one of his dreams to play alongside Di Stefano. And Di Stefano later admitted he was frustrated about never being able to play with Pajinho. It was a shame not to be able to play with Pajinho, Di Stefano said, because together we would have scored a heap of goals. Real Madrid never finished higher than third while Pajinho was at the club, meaning the only trophy the Spaniard ever won with Real was the small World Cup. But make no mistake, despite that, Pajinho was Real Madrid's first ever super duper star. Little footage exists of Pajinho, but from what we do know, he was the first player to hit the 100 goals mark, scoring 125 goals total in just 143 games. By the time he left Real Madrid in 1953, he was the club's all-time top scorer. The only reason he didn't add to his already insane tally was because Santiago Bernabeu didn't want to give him a contract longer than one year as he was over 30. And yes, the all-too-familiar policy of not giving out big contracts to 30-plus-year-old players existed back in the 50s as well. Had Pajinho stayed, there's an almost guaranteed chance he wins a ton of trophies alongside Alfredo Di Stefano, who the club hedged their bets on instead. A born goal scorer, Real Madrid's website reads, an ambidextrous player who felt at home in the penalty area. He had a powerful shot with either feet and was a spectacular header of the ball. He was one of the most outstanding goal scorers of his era. Throughout his career, he was La Liga's top scorer twice, once while playing with Real Madrid. He was the second player at the club to win such an award. He was frightening in the penalty area, brave and combative. This video was an attempt to raise awareness about one of the great forwards of Real Madrid's illustrious history. Thanks for watching this week's School of Real Madrid video. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so that we can continue to grow and put time into making these videos for you to enjoy. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.